Today I'm reading from my new devotional, which comes out just shortly. It's called Victory Decrees, and I would encourage you to pick up your copy. It's called Victory Decrees, and it's a spiritual warfare devotional. Today I'm reading from that, and the title of today's devotional is Don't Let the Enemy Distract You. And here's what I heard the Lord say. You have been distracted. You have, lo- you have looked to a place that I have not called you to look. You've been looking for contentment in places that I have not called you to. You've been looking for blessings in places that I have not ordained for you, says God. Begin to look at me. Gaze at my beauty and tune out all other voices that come to distract you. Tune out all the imaginations that come at your soul. Incline your ear to me, says God, even for a moment, and I will show you things to come. I will give you clarity on even the decisions you have to make in the days ahead. I will give you understanding of some things that are going on. Amen. That's a good word. I don't care where you are listening from. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 10, Psalm 27, verse 4, Proverbs 16, verse 3 are the scriptures. The prayer starter, Father, help me stay in lockstep with your heart and refuse to allow and, and help me refuse to allow the enemy to fool me into looking to the right or to the left. Give me peace clarity and understanding in Jesus name and the decree I decree every demonic voice speaking to me falls on deaf ears but God's voice lands on attentive ears I declare I walk in supernatural wisdom and understanding in Jesus name father we thank you this morning that you are the king to whom we bow a knee you are awesome in power you are mighty in battle you are not distracted but you are focused upon us your eyes watching over us carefully attentively with love and and, and, and kindness you watch over us God we give you praise we honor you as our Lord we honor you as our Savior we honor you as our ruler we honor you as our master you are the God of all gods the only true and living God every other God is but an idol and we will not serve idols we will serve the one true living God the God who sacrificed his son allowed him to die a painful death on the cross to pay for our sins and raised him up on the third day seated him in heavenly places at his right hand you are that God you are that God you are that God who never leaves us alone who helps us to stay focused on things above God would you help us stay focused on things above not on the things of the earth God would you help us to be heavenly minded today God would you help us Lord to focus on what is important to you in the moment to look upon you to gaze upon your beauty to keep our minds set upon you that we might walk in perfect peace in a world that is full of chaos in a world that is tumultuous in a world in which there are so many distractions so many agendas so many issues that work to distract our heart from your love, distract our heart from your purpose and your plan for our life, God. We praise you. We exalt you. We honor you, God, today. Oh, and I just hear the Lord saying, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let your hearts be disturbed and do not let your heart be distracted, says the Lord, for I will sweep in and blow away the residue that the enemy has left behind after the last storm that you walk through. And the Lord says, do not be stressed. Do not be concerned about what is coming next. Do not be one who anticipates the worst because the worst has continued to happen to you but the Lord says expect me to show up strong in your life expect me to rise up and fight for you expect me but you have to expect me says the Lord to do what you of eye has not seen and what ear has not heard and what you could not possibly even imagine expect more says the Lord for many of you are expecting the enemy to come and that's not always bad to brace yourself because the enemy is roaming around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour but you must 
must also expect me, the king of kings, the warrior of warriors. You must expect me to fight with you, for you, and through you, says the Lord. So do not be distracted by the enemy's threatenings. And do not be deterred. And do not take the detour that the enemy wants you to go upon, says the Lord. For I will order your steps, but you must let me order them. You must follow me and not the distractions and the bunny trails that come in your path. The detour signs. Don't follow them, says the Lord. Do not go to the right or to the left, but walk right down the middle of my will. And I will protect you and I will keep you, says the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, help us today, Lord, to press into that God, to not be bewildered by the roaring lion, to not be detracted or distracted, God, in Jesus' name. God, would you help us not to be disturbed? Would you help us, Lord, not to be derailed? Would you help us, Lord, to stop being distracted by petty, 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 petty issues and, quite frankly, petty people who come to us with issues that have nothing to do with us, to pull us into drama that has no part in us? Oh, God, would you help us today to learn how to say no I don't want to know about that no you will not distract me no I am on an assignment I am on a mission it doesn't matter I don't want to hear the gossip I don't want to hear the drama I don't want to be distracted I have a course that has been set before me by the Lord God Almighty and I do not want to be informed about the drama at the workplace I do not want to know about what Susie Q thinks about Johnny Wayside I do not care I am focused on the Lord. This needs to be our mantra. Focus, 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 focus. I come against the spirit of distraction in the name of Jesus. I say enough is enough. We draw a line in the sand. We put our foot down even now on the neck of distraction. And we say you are down for the count. We will not allow ourselves to be moved, nor we will allow ourselves to be shaken. We will not allow ourselves to be taken off the mark. Oh, I just see somebody on the mark, on the mark on the mark on the mark in a race they say on your marks get set and go and many of you have not gotten off the mark because something keeps distracting you and even when the bell rings even when the whistle blows even when they say go you're not ready because you're distracted when God says go you're not ready you got yourself ready to get on the mark you trained for this you prepared for this you studied for this you saved for this and you have been on the mark you have gotten ready but you can't go because of the distractions you can't go you can't run the race God has put before you to the fullness of the extent to what he wants and what he has called you to because of the distractions that come to keep you from hearing the go Jesus I see it so clearly it makes so much sense to me on your marks get set go Many of you have been on the mark. You have been accurate in the spirit. You've been on the mark. You have heard the Lord. You know what you are supposed to be doing. Oh, of course, there's some of you that don't have a clue what your purpose is, but many listening to the sound of my voice, you know, you know, you heard the Lord. You got a prophecy. You are on the mark. You are set. You are ready. You've done the work. You've gotten deliverance. Your prayer life has grown. Get ready. Get set. You are there. You are just waiting for the bell to sound and in the whistle to blow the, uh, the the go word and here comes the distraction 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 and ironically someone just walked into this room while I'm praying which was also a distraction that was a perfect symbol of what happened so you know what you do you keep on praying until you hear the go again you keep on pressing until you hear the go again you reset yourself you get on the mark again and you continue preparing even if you missed it even if you didn't hear God say go or even if you could not get ready to go on time in other words God said go and you couldn't go because of the distraction God said go he said go you heard him say go some of you couldn't hear him say go because of the distractions you were on your mark you were ready but you couldn't hear him say go because of the, all the noise of the distraction all the demonic noise the chatter the thunderings of the enemy you did not hear God say go that's okay stay on the mark stay ready because God will say go again you've just got to eliminate the distractions 
around you. You've got to be bold with some people in your life and say, stop contacting me after seven o'clock at night. That is my wind down time. You've got to get bold with some people and you've got to say, stop coming to me with these issues that we've counseled you on 25 times before and you will not take my advice. You've got to get bold with some people and say, haven't I told you before that I do not want to hear your gossip. I will not tolerate the spirit of division that you're working in. Sometimes you have to get bold with people who are used of the enemy consistently as assignments against you. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about the people that really need help and you need to reach out and you need to be somewhat distracted. You need to take a detour. You need to put your own self, your own self down in order to serve another. I'm not talking about those emergencies that are legitimate. I'm talking about those people that just won't quit. You tell them, don't contact me. I'm in a meeting. I don't contact me. I am writing my book. Do not contact me. Do not let me know. I don't want to hear. It doesn't matter who's upset. It doesn't matter right now. It can wait until later because right now I am on my mark. I am set and I am listening for the sound of God's voice to say, go. I can't miss this. I can't miss my Kairos moment. I can't miss the sound of the go. I can't miss the alarm and the bell. I can't miss the whistle and the shout. I must be ready to hear his voice, not just ready to run, but ready to hear, not just ready to run, just ready to hear also, not just ready to run, but also ready to hear. We must get rid of the distractions. Father, help us today. Help us today, Lord. To walk in love, but to know when walking in love is walking out of the room to preserve your own heart from being infiltrated by gossip and slander and distractions and pettiness. Help us, Lord, to thwart off those religious spirits that want to keep us from your destiny, God. Would you help us, Lord, today in Jesus' name? We need your help, God. We need your help, God. We want to hear your voice when you say go. Oh, we've prepared so long. We've studied so long. We've purged ourselves so long. We've consecrated ourselves in your sight. We've asked you to sanctify us for a cause. And here we are. We are ready. We are prepared. We've been on the potter's wheel. And you've said, now is the time. Get ready. And I will give you the next instruction. And we cannot hear the instruction because of the distraction. Or we get on down the road. We're running our race. And here comes somebody. It's not even the devil. To stick out a stick and trip us up on our race. Come on. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're running hard. You're running fast. And all of a sudden, someone wants to come in, influenced by the enemy or by their flesh or by their own selfishness, and throw a wrench in your works. Demanding your attention in the moment, the critical moment. You've got momentum. You are flowing. You are running. And they want to distract you from something, with something, some old issue, some unnecessary injection. God, would you help us, Lord? Would you help us, Lord? Would you help us, Lord? I can't even look at your comments today. Some of you are just being distracting. Cut it out or get off my broadcast. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. How it's so ironic. I'm doing a call on distractions and I've had just massive distractions throughout this entire broadcast. And it proves my point. What proves my point? I'm good. I'm keeping on. I have not quit. So father, help us even amid the distractions, some of which we can eliminate by setting boundaries, but some which we cannot eliminate. There are some distractions we cannot eliminate. We did not see them coming. They came in unannounced. They didn't mean it. It wasn't purposeful. They just got you at a bad time. There are some distractions that are completely innocent, but still damaging. Would you help us Lord and give us grace to walk through those times to keep on running, to not lose momentum, even when we're tripped up by those around and about us who do not understand what we've been assigned to, who do not understand the critical timing in which we are walking, who do not understand. Lord, help us to forgive the people, but to combat the spirit of distraction that many times flows and influences them to come in at the worst possible time. Come on, have you ever had that happen? It's the word. There's never a good time. For some things, there's never a good time. There's never a good time for someone's death. There's never a good time for an accident. These things can't be necessarily always helped. People are going to die. It's never a good time for someone to die. It's never a good time to lose your job. It's never a good time to get sick. It's never a good time. There's not ever one good time. That, that, there's never a good time to be sick. And being sick is a distraction because you don't feel good. You can't get stuff done. And da 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 There's never a good time for those things. And these are parts of life. Life that we cannot control 
But there are certain things, there are certain elements that can be avoided. So Father, help us walk in grace with the things that we cannot stop. Help us, Lord, give us strength and power in order to stand in that place, even if we can't keep moving forward. Help us, Lord, not to lose momentum, not to lose speed, not to lose momentum in the midst of distractions that cannot be avoided. But Father, help us, Lord, to rise up and understand that we must at times set boundaries that will make people very upset with us. But that's not our problem because our report is to you. Our allegiance is to you. Our responsibility is to you to be able to hear you say go. And then when we're running, when we're running that race, to be able to hear your instruction. When you say now turn left, now turn right, now go back, now go forward, now come up here. We need to hear your instructions. We need to be focused on you as a lifestyle. So Father, help us today to really, really, really understand what's at stake with every moment and not to waste any of it, to redeem the time because the days are evil. Would you help us today to put you first And to let others know unapologetically, but yet with grace and love, that we are not to be uh, detracted, distracted, rather distracted. Help us set the right boundaries that allow us to hear your voice. Because God knows, Lord, you know, there's enough distractions that we cannot avoid in life. Help us to deal with the ones we can and to run in stride with the ones we can't. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. He's good all the time. All the time. He's good all the time. It's so ironic. I laugh. Sometimes you just have to laugh at the enemy, guys. Sometimes you have to just laugh at the enemy. The, uh, the, the, the lady that walked in here, I think she heard me hollering in a high voice while I was praying. And she probably came in here to see if I was okay. And she looks shocked. I think she figured it out. You can't avoid that. Well, you could have, you could have let everybody on the team know you're doing a prayer call, but you're sometimes you just, you can't, there's no way to let everybody know, you know, and then, you know, the ones on here that want to complain on Facebook, you know, all I can, I I can't deal with them in the middle of my broadcast. So you've got to understand that distractions are going to come. Some you can avoid, some you can't and keep on running, keep on running. God is good. We're here in Scotland. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to give. I didn't do that yesterday. I forgot these, these trips are really missions that we take in the nations. They are expensive and you have, you have no idea. We do it as a labor of love. You know, false prophets only go where the money is. You do need money to run a ministry, but false prophets won't just go. I go places all the time. I have no idea wh- wh- you know, what's going to happen. It's because it's a word of the Lord. I don't, money can never be first. If you put money first in decisions you make, you will never, you will find yourself on the wrong side of God quite frequently. If you put money first in the decisions that you make, you will find yourself on the wrong side of God frequently because God's not concerned about that. He's not concerned about that. Amen. But I do want to give you an opportunity to sow. I didn't do it yesterday. And I realized that yesterday was, I know there was a lot of people that wanted to sow yesterday and didn't get to, and we can't deal with all the emails that are, that are coming in over that. So I'm just going to announce it today. If you want to sow, if you want to help us, we're in Scotland, we're going to England, we're launching a new house of prayer. Hopefully it looks like we are, we're, we're scoping it out. We're looking in Bristol, England, which is a very strategic place. And so we need your help to do what God's called us to do, just like these prayer calls are helping you do what God's called you to do. If you want to sow today, you can do that at jenniferleclair.org slash give. Thanks, Prophet Deb, for helping as always. And thanks, Prophet Jamila, for helping as always. jenniferleclair.org slash give. All the different ways to give are listed there. There are uh, the wire instructions there. There's the PayPal, paypal.me slash jenniferleclair, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can become a partner there. We're looking for a thousand partners to sow $25 a month or more. Not because we're in financial straits. We're not in financial straits. Our ministries are debt free as I am personally. I don't believe in debt. I'm not a slave to money. That's why I don't worry about it. Amen. Money works for me, but we do have a big vision for 2020, which I'll share about in the days ahead. And some of it's actually quite secret and undercover in terms of things we're doing uh, that we can't talk about for security reasons, but God 
is good. So we, we, if you want to sow, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Cash app is dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. Uh, text to give is 754-701-2161. 754-701-2161. Thanks, Prophet Jamila. I appreciate it. Uh, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray, P-R-A-Y to 754-701-2161. You can also use the Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Hallelujah. I think those are all the ways. If I'm forgetting something, forgive me. But I want to pray. Father, I thank you for those who are willing to partner and sow into this ministry for your glory. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to sow into the nations every day with prayer all over the world. I thank you, Lord, that that these prayers that are going forth are going to bear fruit in the lives of those who are listening, as will the seed that they sow today in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. There's some stuff I want to share when I get back to the States that I can't share now. I want to remind you of the Ascend Conference in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the Awakening House of Prayer. Ascend 2K19. Myself, Bishop Hammond, Alexander Pagani, and Chasden Strickland. This is the Ignite Network Conference. Uh, you can uh, get your plane tickets. Get on down uh, to South Florida. And uh, it's in December. I think it's the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, you can come for part of that or all of that. The nighttime sessions are open. The daytime sessions, there is a registration fee for the workshops. Uh, Alexander Pagani will be doing a daytime session as well. And so please get involved in that. The seating truly is limited. Prophet Deb, you've been there. You know that we don't have a massive facility. We have a lot of square footage, but a lot of it is kids' rooms, youth rooms, TV studios, and our actual sanctuary is not the largest. So you will need to get registered if you're serious about coming and uh, jump in on that. Amen. If you want to come, please don't wait until the last minute because it's going to be whoever signed up first is who gets the seats. We still have room as of now, though. We're still early, but please don't wait. I love you guys. Get the word out. I'll see you later. Have a great day.